We have 14 of the best buy and hold forever dividend stocks for the portfolio. And in today's article, we are going to take a look at six of these. We're going to do an in-depth look of them. And in fact, every single one we have picked today has at least one buy rating from an analyst. And what we are going to do in our deep dive, we're going to look at the historical performance. We're going to look at the dividend safety for each one. We'll look at dividend yield theory, searching for that double undervaluation signal, as well as looking at at a lot of underlying metrics for each one. And as always, we're going to run them through the valuation model, getting to our own intrinsic value, our acceptable buy price, given our investor margin of safety, and also see what is the implied upside based on Wall Street's price target over the next year. So the first one that we are taking a look at is Medtronic PLC. We have a double buy signal from analysts with a strong buy signal from Quant. We do know this is towards the upper end of the 52-week range. It does have a nice forward yield of 3.21% and also has a forward P 16.54 below the S&P 500 of 22. Now, over the last year, if you are a shareholder, you would be down negative 3%. And over the last 10 years, we do note, in fact, it has gone as high as around $134. However, right now it is trading quite some way underneath at 85.92. In terms of the dividend safety score, well, 99, the highest score obtainable, it does look to be very safe. Market cap, 114 billion. It is a mega cap company. Now, we also note the dividend safety score was reaffirmed just a few months ago, therefore insinuating that a dividend cup does look to be highly unlikely. In terms of the last recession, well, here are some key metrics. In fact, they increased the dividend during the 0709 crash. They had plus 0.6% recession sales. Bear in mind that is above the average of the S&P, sitting at negative 12 but also we do note it pretty much had a near S&P return, negative 56 with the S&P coming in at negative 55. Dividend growth then, not the greatest last May, 1.5%. As always on this channel, we advocate a minimum of 4% just to keep up in line with inflation. This also shows us we are expecting a dividend increase this month from Medtronic. Over the last five years, nice high single digit growth. Over the last 20 years, Double digit growth 13% year on year. We also note they are a dividend aristocrat. They have been increasing those dividends 25 years or more. And in fact, they are five years away from becoming a dividend king. Now, for those that are new to the channel, dividend yield theory states a company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five year average. 3.21, it is above the 2.38, so our first undervaluation signal. We have a double undervaluation signal here as the forward P16 sits below the five-year rolling of 18.1. We also do note that the healthcare sector P isn't too far off, 16.1 versus Medtronic 16. As always, though, we never look at any of these models in isolation, and we will conclude towards the end. In terms of payout ratio, as always, we do focus on the free cash flow. Earnings is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting, and the free cash flow does help us spot any potential dividend cut. Below 60%, as always, our target gives us faith management can offer those double digit increases to their dividend. And what we note from Medtronic over the longer term, it has only been above that three times. Granted, 2023 at 79% is a little bit too high. Nice to note, 2024 expected to come down to 56%. Free cash flow, one thing we always like to say is that always invest in companies that increase their free cash flow over the longer term. However, what we do know with Medtronic, it has been highly inconsistent. Some years, nice growth. Some years, it has in fact decreased significantly. Nice to report 2024, we are anticipating a nice jump from 2023's 344 per share. In terms of sales growth, then, as always, on our deep dive analysis, we look at the top line numbers as well as the bottom line net income. From revenue, we want to see 3 to 7% growth year on year. Medtronic, again, very inconsistent. And what we want to point out, 2023, they had a minus 1% drop to their top line. But in better news, on a trailing 12-month basis, it is looking positive 5% up so far. We then look at the numericals for Medtronic. We do see they have nearly doubled their top line over the last 10 years, 16.9 to 31.2 billion. Shares outstanding. As always, we want companies that do share buybacks, returning that excess cash to those shareholders. However, for Medtronic, just something to note, they would have diluted your position over the longer term as we do see it increase. Although from 2016, the highs of 1.43 billion, they have been doing those share buybacks, although very inconsistently over the period. 
We then move on to the return on invested capital, one of my favorite metrics to look at as it does give us faith that Mandarin are able to effectively allocate their capital. Plus 10% is what I personally like to see, but again, the majority around 8% or more is sufficient. 9% in 2022, 7% in 2023, 8% on a trailing 12-month basis. So it isn't too far off those minimums that we do like to see. In terms of margins, well, above 12% for the majority of companies. One thing we would say is we have noted some operational efficiency as it has decreased over the longer term. 19% on a trailing 12-month basis, still above that minimum. And on a free cash flow margin basis, looking very strong, significantly above the minimum. 15% in the more recent year does look to be very good. We then move on to the net debt to EBITDA, the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. Below three is the target. Now, remember, these are the numbers of years that it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. And this figure does correlate to both dividend safety as well as balance sheet strength. 1.82 in 2023, looking very healthy. 1.72 expected next year, so it is going to be lower. Also a good sign. Given the fact the free cash flow power is also anticipated to drop, you can see why that dividend safety does look to be a very strong score of 99. Let's jump into the valuation model. And as always, if you do enjoy the content, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now, typically on the channel, we do run through every single one of these models. Let's jump straight into the final calculation, which is the average of these three models. Today's episode, $106.16. Current price then, $86. As always, we do use a margin of safety of 10%, which we execute on if it meets our three golden criteria, a wide moat, strong financial metrics, and good forward-looking data if you believe that for mdt it is a buy up to 95.55 then we keep going till it's near the current trading price and in today's episode we can see it isn't too far off a 20 percent margin of safety currently sits somewhere between 50 to 20. In terms of wall street and their expectations well over the next 12 months they do see around 14 percent upside their price target is around 98 dollars which is marginally lower than our intrinsic value of 106. As always, as we go through these stocks today, do let us know your thoughts, whether or not these are ones that you do hold, or maybe they're sitting on your watch list. The next stock that we are taking a look at is KHC, Kraft Heinz Company. We have a buy rating from Wall Street and a hold with the two others. It is sitting in the midpoint of the 52-week range with a forward yield of 4.44%. Forward P, it is just under 12, 11.88. And over the last 12 months, it is down around 7.48%. When we look over the last 10 years, we do note this is down around negative 38%. Not the greatest over the past performance, but as always, it doesn't necessarily mean or an indicator of how it will perform in the future. When we take a look at the dividend safety score, well, it does sit at 60. It looks to be borderline safe. Market cap just under 44 billion. It is a large cap company. When we take a look then at dividend safety, it was reaffirmed just a few days ago that it is sitting around safety. Now, bear in mind what this means is there a moderate risk of a dividend cut over the full economic cycle. In terms of the last recession, well, no dividend paid, so no comparative data. They had around negative 5% recession sales, so above the average growth. And when we take a look at dividend growth, it hasn't been the latest in the more recent period. In fact, a 0% growth since 2019. We note a negative 9% over the last five years and pretty much flat over the last 20. But what we can see is whilst there has been zero years of consecutive increases, there have been four years of paying a dividend without a reduction. Now, in terms of moving on to dividend yield theory, we do note here a sign of reasonable valuation on the yield, 4.44 versus 4.46. However, when we do look at the forward P, we do have a sign of undervaluation, 11.8, whereas the five-year rolling does sit at 13.3. When we take a look, it is significantly lower than consumer staples that sits around 18.8. In terms of looking at the payout ratio, then remember below 60%, although if we want to be industry specific, we can increase it to around 70%. 2023, it does sit at 66%, so that is positive news. 2024, even better news, it is decreasing to around 54%, so hopefully we can soon see a nice dividend increase. In terms of the free cash flow per share, well, very inconsistent, 271 in 2014, 241 in 2023. Nice to note, 2024, it is expected to increase 297 anticipated per share. In terms of sales growth year on year, well, 3 to 7% is what we want to see. Last two years, pretty low, 1 to 2%, so something we should keep an eye on moving forwards. As always, we do want to invest in companies that increase not only their margins year on year, but also their top line. In terms of numericals, where well, they have more than doubled their top line over the last 10 years, 
The only thing we would note is pretty much over the last eight, it has remained fairly flat. And if you were to incorporate that inflation rate, then you could argue in real terms it has been decreasing. Shares outstanding then, what we know since 2016, it has remained pretty much flat. Again, depending on which point you bought, if you did buy in 2014, then they would have diluted your position over the longer term. ROIC, pretty consistent. Remember for consumer staples, we do bring this up to around 12%. Over the last 10 years, though, it has been sitting around the 6 to 7% consistently. Operating margin, well, nice to report that it has been above those minimums that we look at for consumer staples, 20% in 2023, 21 on a trailing 12 basis. And when we do look at the consumer staples 7% free cash flow margin expectation, we can see 2023, they have hit that at 11%, trailing 12 months anticipated to rise. So hopefully we do see a nice number, in fact, a larger number in 2024. In terms of the net debt to EBITDA, nice to note that even though it is increased to four for consumer staples, KHC does sit significantly below that, 2.7 in 23, 2.58 anticipated in 2024. So in terms of the valuation, let's get through it. And as always, you can grab a copy of this valuation model by clicking on the pinned comment below, where you get to both your own intrinsic value as well as your own acceptable buy price for companies in your own portfolio and those on your watch list. So a 10% margin of safety does indicate a buy just under $40. At 15%, we can see it buy up to $37.67. And at 20%, we pretty much note it isn't quite there yet, but we see around 15 to 20% at an MOS level based on our estimates and judgments today. In terms of Wall Street and their forecast, well, they pretty much see a price target of $42 and not far off our intrinsic value. They do see upside of around 70%. Bear in mind, this is one of the higher yielders at around 4.5% year on year. We then move on to the next buy and hold forever, which is Target Corporation. We note a hold rating from Seeking Alpha, a buy from Wall Street and a strong buy from Quant Analyst. It is trading in the upper end of the 52-week range. We have a forward yield sitting around 2.75% and a forward P substantially lower than the S&P of 17. Over the last 12 months, we're well, pretty much flat movement on the share price. Over the last 10 years, though, we do see it up 188%. Remember, if you reinvest those dividends, it would be sitting slightly higher. And we can see here all-time highs around the $260 mark nearly three years ago today. In terms of dividend safety, where well, we have a score of 80, it does look to be safe. Market cap just over $74 billion, a large cap company. And we can see here the reaffirmation of that dividend, which as we can see, a dividend cut does look to be unlikely. When we move on to the key metrics, well, last recession, they in fact increased the dividend. We noticed recession sales at negative 0.8%, so that is above the average growth of the S&P, but they did marginally trail with a negative 61% return. In terms of dividend growth, well, not the greatest last June, so that does mean we are anticipating an increase next month, and that is disappointing given the last five years and the last 20 years, we did see strong double-digit growth to those dividends. Also, nice to report they are a dividend king and they have increased those dividends for 50 years or more. In terms of dividend yield theory, well, we do have a nice undervaluation signal with the yield being higher than the five-year average, although we can see the forward P is only marginally lower than the five-year rolling, but also lower than the consumer staples sector of 18.8. In terms of the free cash flow pout, well, the more recent year and also just something to point out for consumer retailers, we do bring it down to around 40%. 53% in 2024, so yes, slightly higher than the accepted rate of 40%, but over the longer term, we do note it is around that 30 to 50%, so no worries or anything to report. And in 2025, pretty much anticipated around that level at 51%. Free cash flow per share, well, it has in fact doubled over the last 10 years, but again, we do note inconsistencies year on year. 2025, there is expected to be a small increase to around 856. In terms of sales growth, well, what we do note here is that it is around that 3 to 7% on average over the longer term. 3% in 2023, although we do want to report the more recent year, there was a drop, negative 2% in 2024, the second year of the last 10 years where we do see that negative revenue growth. In terms of numericals, though, we do see it growing from 73 billion to 107, and also quite nice that with those double digit increases they have done over the longer term, they're also doing a fair amount of share buybacks, as we can see, reducing it down to around 463 in the latest period. ROIC then above 17%, so it does increase 
increase for consumer retailers. They pretty much hit that in 2024. And other than 2023, they are consistently around that level. So that is quite nice to know. It is one of the metrics that I do go to before looking at any company in detail. In terms of the margins, well, consumer retailers, something that they don't hit. But again, do note the consistency. There has been no worries with the business. And this is the sort of levels they do hit year on year. Although we would like to see it increase from that 5% over the next few years to around the 7 to 9% level we have historically seen. In terms of the free cash flow margin, well, it is around that 6% that we want to see from consumer retailers, but also do note inconsistencies year on year. Finally, we get to the net debt to EBITDA below consistently three year on year, always a great sign. 1.75 in 2024, anticipated around that next year with that free cash flow payout, that dividend looks to be safe and the balance sheet also looks to be healthy in today's episode. So in terms of the valuation for target, let's get straight to it in today's episode. And it is the average of these models coming at just over $203 with a price of $160. So a 10% margin of safety, a buy up to $183. At 15%, up to 173 At 20%, pretty much around the current trading price. If you wanted a 25% margin of safety, you would have to buy at 152 So in today's episode, we see around a 20% MOS level for Target. And in terms of Wall Street, well, they see near enough a 20% upside. Their price target, $190. Again, some way away from our intrinsic value, but they do see this as a fairly strong buy and one to consider for the portfolio. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, just before we move on to the next buy and hold forever stock just to let you know we've released our latest free weekly article 20 undervalued dividend stocks you need to consider in your portfolio if you want access to this or any others all completely free click on that pinned comment below you can read instant free access also to point out a lot of people do ask what are the websites we use to analyze stocks we do explain all of those and the resources in this free article so do go ahead and check it out the next buy and hold forever we have the coca-cola company a double buy rating as well as a strong buy from quant we do know it is towards its 52 week high it does have a forward yield of over 3% and a forward P pretty much in line with the S&P 500. Over the last 12 months, it is pretty much flat. Over the last 10 years, though, excluding dividends reinvested, you would be up around 56%. In terms of dividend safety, well, we have an 80 safe score, market cap 272 billion. It is a mega cap company, and we can see around four days ago, it was reaffirmed that a dividend cut does look to be unlikely. In terms of the last recession, well, nice to note they increased the dividend. They had a above average growth and they also outperformed the S&P with their negative 31% return. They did increase the dividend above inflation just this February. Nice to know, although the last five years has been lacking slightly with a 3% target. And over the last 20 years, 7% year on year has been very nice to know. Not only are they a dividend king with 61 years of paying consecutive increases, but they've been paying a dividend for the last 104 years without a reduction. Now, in terms of dividend yield theory, we have a reasonable valuation on the yield. When we look at the forward P22, it is below the historic five-year average of 24 Point two, but it is also above the consumer staples of 18.8. Moving on to the free cash flow payout for the Coca-Cola company, we do note 70% remember the target. It has in fact historically been very high, just something to note. Last two years, in fact, in the low 80s, 2024 coming down to 75%. So hopefully in 2024, we do get to see, or in fact 2025, we do get to see a nicer increase to the dividend. Free cash flow share, well, it has been moving in the right direction. Again, a lot of inconsistency, anticipated growth into 2024 of 259. And when we look at the sales growth, again, just to point out, pretty much over the last 10 years, six of them have been negative growth. The last three, however, have been positive. And we can clearly see that when we look at that numerically. 46 billion down to 33 in 2020. Since then, it has picked up to around 46 billion. Shares outstanding, well, as we can see, they don't return any cash. Very, very minimal share buybacks over the last 10 years something just to point out roic though looking very attractive for potential investors as well as those who are already shareholders 14 percent in 2014 has increased over the longer term which is always a great sign 18 percent in the more recent year and when we take a look at both margins we can see in fact operational efficiency increasing from 24 percent to 29 percent in 2023 and also the free cash flow margin looking very strong this is a very good free cash flow machine to consider for the portfolio but remember always at the right price. Net debt to EBITDA well below four consistently 2.08 in 2023. Expected to go 
lower in 2024 at 1.71. So balance sheet does look strong. Dividend safety also looks very good. In terms of the valuation of the Coca-Cola company in today's episode, we are getting to an intrinsic value of just under $68. With a margin of safety then at 10%, it would be a buyer at 61. So we don't see it at that 10% level just yet. In today's episode, however, we do see between a 5 to 10%. Lots of people, however, have a strategy where they just dollar cost average in to very strong companies, and this may be one of them. But as always, let us know your thoughts below. In terms of Wall Street, however, they have a price target of $69. They see upside of 10%, indicating it is one to consider today. We then move on to the tobacco company with a high yield. It is Ultra Group. We have one buy rating and two holds. It has been very strong in the more recent period. It is trading at its 52-week high or thereabouts. It has a very nice forward yield, still of 8.51% and a forward P sitting at just over 9. Over the last year, up just under 2%, and over the last 10 years, we can see up 13.3%, although some way away from all-time highs, sitting around the $77 level. In terms of the dividend safety, borderline safe, 55, market cap, 79 billion. It is a large cap company. We can see it was just reaffirmed this month that there is a moderate risk of a dividend cut over the full economic cycle. In terms of looking at those key metrics, well, last recession, they increased the dividend they did have below 50% sales, so that is pretty poor. And they did, however, even though with the recession sales, negative 50%, very nice recession return, negative 20 versus the S&P's negative 55. Last summer, well, very nice for a company that pays a high yield, 4.3% in line with inflation increase. In fact, over the last five years, above inflation at 5%. However, over the last 20, it has left something to be desired for at a 2% level. We do also note they are a dividend king with 54 years of consecutive increases in terms of dividend yield theory then we do see it is marginally above the five years so some signal here of still undervaluation we do know however the forward p sitting at nine isn't too far off the 9.3 rolling average but significantly lower consumer staples of 18.8 as the sector pe in terms of the free cash flow payout then for tobacco companies we do extend it to 85 percent as they do pay the majority of their free cash flow as dividends to shareholders but nice to note it has been significantly low that over the more recent period 63% in 2023 although we do anticipate this to rise to around 87% in 2024 in terms of free cash flow we're probably one of the first ones today with very strong increases over the longer period nearly three times up to 607 but we can see a drop expected into 2024 at 451 in terms of sales growth well as we can see very mixed very very marginally does it ever meet the three to seven percent rate in fact the last two years at negative but very nice to note on a trailing 12 month basis that top line is anticipated to increase by 11 percent numerically speaking then we can see very marginal growth from 18 billion to just under 21 and when we look at these shares outstanding, we do note they are doing some of those share buybacks. In fact, from their latest investor presentation, they are looking to continue to do this over the more recent quarters. Very nice ROIC, in fact, increasing strongly over the longer term, a lot better than the likes of British American Tobacco. Trailing 12 months as well at 53% is something that a lot of investors will like and find very attractive. Operating margin, now they may not be increasing their top line at a rapid rate, but they are increasing their margins rapidly, some very nice operational efficiency, and the same can be said with the free cash flow margins significantly above that minimum 20% and the last year looking very very strong. In terms of the net debt to EBITDA very important for a company that does pay a very high yield below three for tobacco and in fact it has been below three every single year anticipated to go to 1.71 in 2024 so the dividend does look to be safe as well as the balance sheet looking to be healthy. In terms of the valuation, and as always, if you do enjoy the content, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Current price then, 10%, we can see pretty much trading right now at a 10% MOS level. Different investors will have different rates that they want to use depending on how they see companies and their own investment thesis. In terms of Wall Street, however, they see around 9% upside. Their price target, $48, not far off our intrinsic value. And don't forget, it does currently pay a yield of around 8.5%. The next stock from the article in terms of a buy and hold forever, it is Verizon. We have a double buy signal seeking alpha in Wall Street with a hold from Quant. It is trading towards its 52-week high. Forward yield, 6.64%. Forward PE, just under 9 And we can see over the last year, it is up around 11%. 
over the last 10 years, as we can see, in fact, down nearly 20%. When we take a look at dividend safety score, well, 70, it does look to be safe. Market cap, 169 billion, a mega cap company with reaffirmation that the dividend cut for Verizon today does look to be unlikely. In terms of essentially looking at the key metrics, last recession, while well, they increased the dividend, they had above average growth, and they did, in fact, outperform the S&P negative 38%. Remember, the S&P came in at negative 55 Don't expect the greatest of dividend increases, as we can see the latest, as well as the last five years. Even over the last 20, it has increased very marginally 3% year on year. They have been increasing those dividends for the last 17, whilst also paying a dividend for the last 40 without a reduction. When we take a look at dividend yield theory, we still have a severe undervaluation signal on the yield, 6.64 above the five-year 4.79, and on the forward P, 8.7, it is below the 9.9 .9 that we see here. In terms of comparing it, well, the communication sits a lot higher at 17. We then draw your attention to the free cash flow payout. Now, below 70% for telecoms, they have had some years that has been very high, one of the reasons we do focus on this 2022 they essentially paid out more in dividends than they generated in free cash flow something you wouldn't have been able to see by looking at the earnings of 50 percent positively though 2023 has come down to 86 2024 anticipated to come down even lower when we take a look at the free cash flow well very mixed it can see here over the longer term in fact it has decreased but again very inconsistent 2024 expected to be very high though 475 which is good news if you are a shareholder when we take a look at sales growth well what we do note here is that over the last 10 years three of them including the more recent year have been negative so again it just goes to show the inconsistency with this company and in terms of long long-term growth year on year 127 billion to 134 so it has barely increased in line with inflation and on top of that we're just pointing out they would have diluted your position over the longer term as we can see those shares outstanding increased year on year in terms of the ROIC above 9% for telecoms they have done that but we do note that it has been decreasing positive low over the last few years 10% sitting at the minimum that we really want to see for any of our investments in terms of margins operating side looking healthy above the 14% 23 over the last two years and in terms of the free cash flow margin, last two years, again, looking strong above the 7% that we set. Pretty much inconsistent though over the longer term, but we will something that we can look at year on year. In terms of the net debt to EBITDA then, below 3.5 for telecoms, it is straddle around that over the last few years, expected to be pretty much in line with the previous year at 3.3 in 2024. So, so far the dividend does look to be okay. As we did mention earlier, a dividend cut so far looks to be unlikely for Verizon. Remember as well, you can grab a copy of the this valuation model by clicking on the pin comment below if you are interested in getting to the intrinsic value of other companies in your portfolio or even those on your watch list so an intrinsic value just under 45 dollars a 10 cent mos level is pretty much where it's sitting at right now again depending on investors you will have different levels let us know below your thoughts and in terms of wall street and their price target well they see upside of 14 percent $45.62 is what they see as the price in the next year. So these are the six of the buy and hold forever dividend stocks that we did pick out from that latest Yahoo article just last week. Let us know if you do agree with any of these, if you hold any of these, or maybe they're now on your watch list. As always, don't forget to smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Let us know your thoughts below and we'll see you all on the next one.